Hello, my name is Vikram Jeet Singh Ruprai and I am here to guide you about an upcoming program of the City Palace Jaipur which will turn our monuments into an instrument of learning. A monument is a building or a site that has some historic importance. Now it could be a site associated with a personality, an event or some phenomena that left a mark on the memory of community living around it. However, at the time when the monument was being constructed, it was not just a history that was in making. It also embodied several concepts of engineering, science, technology, of socio-political development, economic ripples and even environmental factors. Are we, the student of 21st century, ready to study a monument through the lens of science instead of plain touristy stories? Marja Savai Man Singh Second Museum Trust of City Palace, Jaipur brings you the Jaipur History Festival. During this festival, one of the programs will be ETM or Education Through Monuments. We invite school students from grade 7, 8, 9 and 11 to participate in this program. Each school will have to identify a small team of students who will pick a monument to study. This team will be guided by the subject teachers at the school. However, in the case where a school teach, uh, you know, where the school teachers are not able to take the research to a higher level, the school may seek help from the mentors appointed by the city palace. Now, a monument is not just a site for tourists. It always had a purpose. Although in many cases the monument is not being used for its original intended purpose, each monument is a marvel of engineering, engineering in its own right. If our teachers can spend some time around each selected monument, they will realize how every corner of that structure is filled with learning opportunities. We would like to encourage our teachers to find those opportunities and share with students. So this is how we should proceed. Uh, step 1. Each student forms a teacher's panel where teachers from different subjects sit together. Step 2. Step two. A team of students is identified who will work with these teachers to study the monument. Uh, there can be more than one team from each school. A team can have one or more students and they may or may not be from the same class or section. Step 3. Collectively, teachers and students will identify a monument. The teachers will then find out the topics that, uh, you know, from their curriculum, which can be taught through this monument. Each team can have only one monument. However, if there are multiple buildings within a single complex, they can be included in the study. For example, if you're, uh, uh, let's say, taking but uh, Bateshwar complex of the Chambal Valley in Morana, you can include all 200 temples and maybe even include Gadi Padhavli, the, the fort nearby. Or if you're studying the Kangra fort, uh, Sorry, if you are studying the Kangla fort of Imphal, do include the Kangla Shahs of, uh, in the Govindji temple, the citadel, the rose garden and the various Pokharis that are within the complex. Step 4. Students start their research uh, under the given topics and prepare their results. The final step will be where a report is prepared and presented during the Jaipur History Festival in December. This can be presented in person or online. In this report, students will exhibit how they can learn various topics through the monument of their choosing. Now, let me explain all this with an example, or perhaps a multiple examples to understand better. Um, okay, let's say uh, that we are trying to cover the topic of percentage and area, and the identified monument is Taj Mahal of Agra. Students can have a problem statement that reads, find the percentage of land covered by the four minarets of Taj Mahal. Now, what students can do, they can walk along the length and breadth of Taj Mahal platform and measure the area with their feet. Then, they can carefully place their feet along the base of the minaret and calculate the circumference. Now, the minaret of Taj Mahal is not completely on the platform. It is slightly outside, which means students will get only one-fourth of the side uh, that they can measure. So, through that, they can do you know calculations and once they have the circumference then it's a simple formula that they need to put the size of the base of minaret can be calculated and from here it becomes easier to calculate the percent percentage of the land covered by the minaret on the platform side note you know the name Taj Mahal does not appear in old Mughal records it is actually mentioned as Raza Munawar or the illuminated tomb during the times of Emperor Shah Jahan and 
देर आर फोर बिल्डिंग्स दैट आर कॉल्ड ताज महल और ताज इन आगरा दीज आर बेबी ताज ब्लैक ताज रेड ताज एंड ऑफकोर्स द मेन व्हाइट ताज महल दैट वी ऑल नो ओके बैक टू ई टी एम इफ अ स्टूडेंट विशेज टू स्टडी द स्पीड ऑफ रोटेशन ऑफ अर्थ नो मूवमेंट ऑफ द शेडो ऑन द सन डायल कैन बी परफेक्ट We have larger dials in the form of Jantar Mantar in Delhi, Jaipur, Varanasi, Ujjain, or maybe the smaller ones like the one we have in uh, Kutub Complex of Delhi, the Center Sun Sun Dial. Shadow of a pole is equally helpful in this case. Numerous Ashokan pillars, iron pillar, and other victory towers of India can, you know, can be helpful. Uh, exothermic reactions. Uh, we don't have better examples than the common lime mortar used in all medieval buildings in order to create the mortar a proper lime cycle is followed and exothermic reaction of lime is the most important step in this process almost all monuments in india that fall under archaeological survey of india have a lime pit nearby uh, you know when the, uh, the, that's a pit that asi uses to prepare restoration material it is mixed with several other elements like rice lentil jaggery jute etc these items can be identified by just talking to the local supervisor of archaeological survey of india at the monument now mind it not all monuments are under archaeological survey of india there are monuments which are of national importance that fall under asi then there are monuments of the state importance that fall under the state government and then there are buildings that are under private control so you can talk to the respective authority to find more information now talking of lime we have several caves in india where you know lime causes some wonderful phenomena to occur maybe some school can take up uh, borra caves of arakku valley near the andhra odisha border uh, also um, can i identify the height height of monument using actually without using any advanced equipment well if i have studied trigonometry well in my class then this should be a piece of cake now many monuments in india also contain water ponds can i call calculate the volume of water that can be stored in the tank also if i have to fill that tank with a garden hose how much time will it take to fill that tank if the water pressure is known you know i have been to many forts and palaces in india what amuses me is that none of them are suffocating and there is always a small beam of light within throughout the day the monuments are designed in such a way that they are well ventilated and adequately lit up students can study the structure to identify how light air water and other elements are managed within the building and how can we forget the socio political and the economic perspective student can try to find out the economic factors of the region before and after the monument and how did the monument change the power game in politics of that era and is also probably affecting the present day political scenarios a team of students can talk to the local authorities to find out the number of visitors for their chosen monument and see how much does it cost to maintain the structure and how much can be raised through tickets and if uh, okay is the building of your choosing affecting the local literature or culture for example the karavasarai of noor mahal built by empress noor jahan is part of several folk songs of the doaba region of punjab just like red fort of delhi has been part of the famous children's game posham pa bhai posham pa lal kile mein kya hua unique lifestyles have developed around loktak lake of manipur the sambar lake of rajasthan and the dal lake of kashmir these should be a delight for the humanities students to study the past present and future of these lifestyles there are endless opportunities our teachers and students will have to think out of the box in case you are not able to zero down on the monument to study i will be happy to help you identify a structure from your region where students can easily visit drop in a message with your school's name and city and i'll see what best i can do now mentors at city palace can also help you pick topics that can be studied through the selected monuments however we will appreciate if the school team puts in some genuine effort in preparing some content before reaching out to any of the mentors the objective of this exercise is to showcase how we can study our curriculum and topic through the unconventional methods my best wishes to you and your team jai hind